This lesson is part of my video course that teaches how to build event-driven Spring Boot microservices with Apache Kafka. For other lessons in this playlist, please check description of this lesson. In this lecture, you will learn about Kafka Topic. Topic is a place where Kafka stores all published messages. For example, let's say we have products microservice. And on the other side in my diagram, I have three microservices. SMS notification microservice, email notification microservice, and push notification microservice. Each of these three microservices wants to be notified when a new product is created in our system. So when a new product is created, to notify these microservices, products microservice will publish event. But instead of sending this event directly to a destination microservice, Kafka producer will store this event in Kafka topic. Topics are partitioned, and each partition is replicated across multiple Kafka servers for durability. This way, even if there is an issue with one Kafka server, you still have your data stored on other Kafka servers. So all events that products microservice will publish will first be stored in Kafka topic. And microservices that are interested in receiving these events, they will read these events from Kafka topic. Now, let's have a look at Kafka topic in more details. When working with a topic, you will refer to it by its name. So each topic that you create will have a unique name. And in the example that I have on my screen, the name of the topic is product created event topic. The topic itself is split into partitions. And in the example that I have on my screen, the topic is split into three partitions. This is very helpful because consuming microservices can read data from topic partitions in parallel. And this can help us increase throughput, scale our application, and make our system work faster. For example, if we create a topic with more than one partition, we can horizontally scale our application and have a separate instance of the same microservice read from its own partition in parallel. And this way, Events that are stored in Kafka topic are processed much faster than if you had only one instance of microservice running. If one instance of our microservice is still busy processing one event, other instances can pick up other events from the topic and process them in parallel. We will talk more about how to start multiple instances of the same microservice and how to make them work together as a group separately in following lectures, so you will learn more about it. But for now, let's focus on topic partitions. You will specify how many partitions to create in a topic and the time when you create topic. Once the topic is created, you can increase number of partitions if needed, but at the time of recording this video lesson, Apache Kafka does not support reducing the number of partitions for a topic. So you can increase number of partitions but you cannot decrease it. Now, the topic itself is a logical concept in Kafka, but each partition is actually a small storage unit that holds data, and it is stored on a hard disk on Kafka server. So the topic that I have on my screen, it has three partitions, and each partition looks like a table row. Each row has cells, and this is where data is stored. So partition zero has five cells, and each cell contains event data. Now, notice that each cell in a partition is numbered. This number is called offset. And this offset is very similar to index in Java array. It starts with zero. When a very first event is stored to partition zero, it will be stored with index zero. The next event that will be stored to partition zero will be stored at index one. And every time, a new event is stored to partition 0, its offset will increase by 1. So Kafka topic is append only, and a new event is always added at the end. Now, event data that is stored in a partition, it is immutable. Once you store event to a partition, you cannot change it. You cannot delete it, and you cannot update it, just like in real life. If certain event took place, you cannot change history and you cannot undo this event. You also cannot insert events in the middle of partition. You cannot insert it somewhere between of existing events. 
a new entry is always added at the end of the partition. And once the message is persisted, its offset is increased by 1. Now, notice that each partition in this topic has different number of numbered cells. This is because each partition can have different number of events stored. Within a single partition, like for example within partition 0, events are stored in order. But across partitions, the order is not maintained. This is why it's possible that different partitions can have different amounts of events stored. Now, I've mentioned that event data that is stored in Kafka topic, it is immutable and that you cannot change it and you cannot delete it. Also, after the message is consumed from Kafka topic, it remains there and does not get deleted. It can stay there for as long as needed, but it does not stay there forever. By default, Kafka topic is configured to retain events for 7 days, but this value can change through configuration properties. If needed, you can change this value and you can make Kafka topics keep data for as long as you need it. Alright, so I hope you now have a better understanding of what Kafka topic is. In the following lectures, you will learn how to create and how to work with Kafka topics in more details. But for now, let's continue to the next lecture.